Builders coming at it. Bowler over on the far side. Bowler just in front. Rocket Horse is in for the fight. Bowler and Rocket Horse, they hit it. Bowler. Welcome to this week's edition of The Final Gallop. It is episode 269 and is proudly supported by PlayUp and the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. This week we are going to preview our runners for Saturday's Aquis $1.6 million race day at the Gold Coast. Morning Tony, um, plenty of excitement in the air as the, the Southern Carnival heads to the Gold Coast and we have the first major meeting on the new track there. Yeah, good morning Claire, good morning everyone. Yeah, it is an exciting time. We moved down for our two week, which is now, it's a two week carnival, isn't yeah, it? Magic it is. Man's. It used to be just the one day and yeah. the lead up to it. Now it's a, it's a genuine two Saturday carnival with, with plenty of plenty of things happening on and off the track obviously the sales yearly inspections and all the other all the other events that, that go with it so mm -hmm. it's a really busy week really busy 10 days mm -hmm. really really busy time but it's, it's a lot of fun and it's good to get down there and I'm sure that the team at the Gold Coast Turf Club um, had been pretty ner nervous at the start of this week I think I read somewhere 190 mil yeah. early in the week on this Gold Coast track and I was really pleased to see yesterday it was already back to a heavy eight so I'd imagine, we, which you'll get to in a minute, I'm sure we're racing something around about soft or better. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure they're happy to see these blue skies and the sun's out and they're heading into the start of this two week carnival. Absolutely. Just a quick re rewind though to a fantastic finale for the two, for 2003 four hour stable with three winners last Saturday at Doombin in a sex situation room. Princess Ronis and also the last start of uh, Zoo Style who's had a super career. Yeah, it's it, it, it was a good finish to the, to the five weeks of what they call it, the road to the Magic Means, I mm -hmm. think, at the BRC. I think the tracks raced really well. Uh, Dooman yeah, punched well above its weight like it always does, and Eagle yep. Farm raced terrific by the, by the first day. So it was a really good road to the Magic Means. On last week, um, the stable raced really well. We were probably a little bit unlucky to a degree not to have won a couple more, mm -hmm. um, but three winners is always good on these big feature days. Uh, Zoo style, what more can I say about him? He hit the ground running as a he two did. year old yeah. and he's, he's still racing in good company as, as an eight year old. I think something we're all really proud of. Um, try him out at the 1350s last start and you know he, he was courageous as he always. Was, he was. So he's had a great career and I'm really thankful to, to Russell and Des and, and, and their families for allowing us to retire him on a high. Yep. Um, he, goes, he goes to his, to his <laughs> next career um, in some sort of equestrian capacity. Yeah, as a lovely sound race horse that you know, someone's going to have a lot of fun with. He's, he's a beautiful animal and he's given us so much joy here, all the staff and everyone involved in the stable and the people that have followed him. So happy retirement, Zoe. I'm sure you're going to make someone a, a fantastic companion. And it'll be absolutely missed around the stable. Oh, he will be. He's, he's a real character and every, and all the riders that had something to do with him intimately, and there are a few. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few. Stewie Hinks was his main, main rider most of the time. There's a few jockeys that rode him. I'm sure they'll all He'll be dealing with because he, he was a real, he's a real character. He, he, was, he, was a, he was a different sort of horse and yep. the way he worked and carried himself. But you know, he'll be, he'll be sorely missed. But look, I think we can reflect on what a great career he had. 100%. Okay, on to Saturday's Aquas the Wave race day at the Gold Coast. The rail will be in the true position. The track is currently rated a soft seven with mostly sunny days ahead. Uh, with the deluge that the track has copped, um, we possibly could get back to a good surface by Saturday if there are no more showers or storms. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's quite remarkable. Mm. You know, it was a heavy eight yesterday, soft seven today coming up, or it might have been a soft seven yesterday afternoon, I'm not sure, but it's certainly on the improve. It's mm. quite amazing, the, these tracks. I mean, it's got a new cover of grass on it, and got a new drainage, and it's obviously working really, really well. Yeah. They've had a great team down there looking after it. So, from from what I saw at the trials on the course proper the other day in that one race meeting, the, the rain's only gonna help this track. It, it, it was it got quite firm, mm -hmm. I thought. Um, so this rain should be beautiful for yeah. it. You'd imagine just watching that grass grow before their eyes down there. So it should be a great surface. It's got lovely cambers on the track now, and we're not going to know any sort of bias or how the track sort of plays till we get into the meeting. Yeah. Um, but I think we're on a, a really nice fresh pitch. It's had good rain early in the week. Yep. And hopefully, nice fine weather into race day and including race day. We will start with race two, which is the gold nugget for two-year-old Colts and Geldings over the 1,100 metres. We have Ballester in this. He'll carry 56 kilos with Jimmy Orman in the saddle from barrier four. With play-up, he's paying $6.50 to win and $2.60 for the place. He does uh, come into his debut on Saturday off two impressive trials, most recently a second over 840 metres at Durban. Yeah, he's a really impressive horse. Um, he did a fair bit of work in Melbourne with Troy Corstens early in the piece and went through the ready to runs, etc. Come up here, he's had the couple of trials here, the Deegan one and then the, the Dooman one where he runs second. I thought he was pretty impressive that day. They yeah. ran fast time and 
he did a good job, had a lot more weight on his back than what the, the winner of that trial had, which people were taking into consideration. He's a nice horse, he's progressed on well from that, he's very fresh, very well. He runs into a good two-year-old race. Whether we run him this week or the debutant is probably the, the question, I think he's four bucks next week in the debutant, he's six bucks or seven bucks mm -hmm. here. So, similarish prices. Um, obviously, Kieran Mars horse is the one to beat in yeah. this race, there's no doubt about that. It was a short price favourite at Wyong and just got the wobbles late. Whether they try and ride it a bit quieter or not, I'm not sure. I think if we were to run this week, we'd land in a pretty good position and he's a well above average horse. So whichever race we go to this week or next week, he'll be very competitive. Yeah. Next week's race, probably with debutant horses, looks more favorable. Mm -hmm. But this week we've got the good draw and we're sort of ready to go. So we'll just see, we'll see which way we go. He'll be competitive wherever we run him. Okay. Race three is the gold pearl for two year old fillies over the 1100 meters. Mulan Miss will run in this with 56 kilos. Angela Jones will take the ride. Barrier 8 with play up, she's paying $3.50 to win and $1.35 for the place. Uh, she's also on debut, uh, the Spirit of Boom Philly, and has won two jump outs and most recently a trial at Doombin uh, to set her up nicely for this. Yeah, she's a lovely filly. She's um, well prepared for a first up run. She's she's the first of our of our poor draws for the day, so thanks very much, <laughs> Racing Queensland, whoever pulled these marbles out. You've done a great job. I hope you don't have a job next week. <coughs> Awful. Um, this gate is, is tricky for her. Uh, there's one, there's a couple drawn underneath there. Obviously, the thing of McAvoy is the favourite, mm -hmm. it's the one to beat. And there's form out of that race already. I know that that, that race hasn't been a great guide for Magic Minions horses, but the form out of that race is already good with the Godolphin horse coming and winning in Sydney yeah. on the weekend. So there is a bit of form around that race this year. This filly, she's impressive. She'll, she's got lo lovely speed. She'll, she'll race handy. Whether she leads outside leader, whether she's 1 1, it'll just depend on how that race shapes. One of Les Ross's drawn low, you know. It's got speed too. It could be a nuisance value, the Kobayashi horse. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just not sure where we land there. Um, I do think the wide draw is trickier than what I'd like it to be. I know she's well above average, yeah. um, as is the favourite. So it, it's a good test for her first day out, but she's a nice filly. She'll improve off it like all our two year olds do. Um, but she's very impressive and she's very well prepared. Yep, she's a little professional. She's a real professional filly. Um, she's in for the fight. She's had the grass jump out, grass trial. She, she's very ready for a first up run. Move on to race five, which is the three-year-old handicap over 1,200 metres. We have certainly can in this race. She'll carry 55 kilos. Tim Clark riding. Not a bad barrier. Barrier 17 yep. with play up. She's paying $3.40 to win and $1.60 for the place. She did break a maiden with a near six-length romp at Doombin over this trip a fortnight ago, but we'll need a really good ride from Timmy from the outside gate. Yeah, the, the wide gate is tough. She hasn't really drawn a gate all prep, to be honest. She drew wide when she got beat. First up in the maiden, she improved, and she went to that next start. She drew in the middle, and she, she came out very awkward. The other day, she began all right, and Jimmy Orman had to really use her up, but she powered away. Mm -hmm. She's she's a really nice filly. What I like about her in this race, this is definitely the right race for her. Mm -hmm. The gate makes it tougher. Tim's a terrific rider, a good barrier rider, gets him out and gets him moving. So, well, she'll be ridden on pace, um, whereabouts on pace. That'll determine yeah. after they've gone a furlong or so. You got a nice furlong into that first corner anyway, so. Look, he'll just be positive for that first 200 and see where he lands. If you can get across from the gate, then I've got no doubt she's the right horse for the race. Okay. We'll go to race seven, which is the way for the three and four year olds over 1800 metres. We will have two runners. Ain't he grand will be the first one we'll talk about. 58 and a half kilos, Mark Zara on board. Another great barrier in 15. Um, with play up, he's paying $18 to win and $4.80 for the place. Uh, was a strong winner last start over the 1,846 metres at Eagle Farm. Uh, at his peak for this, and blinkers go on. Yep, blinkers tongue tied go on here. Key gear changes, I think. He's, um, I think Zara will suit him. Uh, the young kid Bailey Willow rode him a treat the other day at Eagle Farm, but much lesser grade than this. Yep. Uh, Mark was, you know, he's very good at riding horses, just back and navigating through a field, and that's the way to ride him. Just let the race go, come back in the second half of the field, get some cover and ride a race. We've got a very good idea by this stage of the day exactly how this track will play, yeah. Claire, and where we'll need to get to. So Mark will, Mark will have the horse, I'm sure, in the right position and ready to strike. Yeah. He's the horse best ridden quite and running on. So the gate doesn't worry me as much here okay. for this bloke. Um, we'll be giving him a start, but I think that's the best way to ride him anyway, and I think he'll race well. The, the gear changes, I think, are very positive. The blinkers go back on, he's worn them before, mm -hmm. and the tongue tie goes back on. So they're just the gear that's been used, that we've decided to use again, yep. I thought his work in, um, work in that gear on Wednesday morning was very, very sharp. Mm -hmm. he, he's a nice horse, you'll see big improvement in him. Okay. 
Madame Odette is the second runner. She'll carry 56 and a half kilos. Ben Thompson will ride her. She's drawn barrier four. She's paying $5 to win with play up and $2 for the place. Uh, came around them on the turn and hit her straps uh, to win over 1,810 metres at Eagle Farm last start. Uh, and that form has been frank with the second place getter, Princess Rainey's winning the shootout last week. Yeah, Princess Rainey's won the Open. Um, I think that race was probably better, stronger race than what this is. Um, so this, this mare's form's great. She's in good order. She's worked well. 21 days into this is perfect. Then worked to Tuesday morning. She, she's really well. She's really good in herself. She's nice and fit. So she maps to get a, a terrific run here. I think she's no further back than third pair. Similar to where she got the other day. She was able to make use of her good draw when she beat Princess Rani's. I think she can make use of this good draw again. Put herself in the right position. And Outside of the favourite, I think she's clearly one of the ones to beat here in this race. She's a very good chance. How are you going to split the two? Um, I, I put Madame Idell on top. I just love the way she maps. It, it, it reminds me a bit of her and Princess Rani the other day. Okay, yep. he'll, he'll run much better than his odds, but whether he can give her a big start and get her down. I think she maps beautifully. I think she'll be very hard to beat. I've won the wave once and we run second with Ashgrove. I think th this mare is easily as good as Ashgrove's form going into this. So I, I think she's had a great prep for it. Race 8 is the Magic Millions Rising Stars for the 3 and 4 year old fillies and mares over 1300 metres. We have Latakia in this race, who's having a chill out at the back of the box over there. Uh, she'll carry 57 kilos, Ryan Maloney will ride her from barrier 18 with play up. She's paying $13 to win and $4 for the place. Uh, three seconds from her four starts, uh, this preparation, so she'll be rock hard fit and she did win this race last year as a three year old. Yeah, she did. I would love to have seen her win a race to get some confidence under her sails going into this is the only negative. Mm -hmm. um, I think she'll enjoy this Gold Coast surface. Mm -hmm. She likes the track. I think 1300 is about perfect for her distance wise. Yep. Set of winkers go on just to keep her mind on the job. Um, I'm really hopeful she steps a little bit better. She's had that bad habit this prep of just stepping that touch tardy. Yep. So you'll see us keep her pretty busy behind the gates. Endeavour to, she'll obviously load in late, which is the only positive from this wide draw, there's yep. no other positive whatsoever. That's the only positive. Yep. She'll load late, she'll roll forward. She can race anywhere in the first three pairs. And the good thing about go forward horses drawn wide at this start, you got a good run. Yep. You got a lovely run. You haven't got to make your decision after 15 yep, meters. You've got a good yep. 300 meters to roll into your race, get into your spot. So I'm not tearing my ticket up with a horse like her drawing deep. Matter of fact, the way she's been stepping, it could be an advantage rather than drawing low because she yep. could get crossed early and put into an awkward spot. Okay. So I think she races somewhere in the first six, gets across, gets a nice enough run, and she'll be a big improver. Race nine is the Magic Millions Rising Stars for the three and four year old Colts, Geldings and Entires over the 1300 metres. We have five runners in this. We'll start with Standing Order. He'll carry 60 kilos. Ben Thompson rides Barrier 22 with play up. He's paying $23 to win and $6.50 for the place. He did give a great sight in the gateway, uh, just finding the 1400 metres a little bit too far. Was in really good form prior to that. We'll appreciate the slight drop back, but draw McCarthy. Yeah, he, he's a bit like um, Latakia. I think yeah. the draw's not the end of the world for him. What we saw at the trials the other day too, when he, when he tri I trialled him in between at Deegan, that mm -hmm. tearaway lead, he was happy to take a trail and just travel. He's not a lead at all cost horse. He's yeah. just been put himself into that position in some very moderately run races. So this is a big field racing for a bit of money. They normally generate pace. So I'm, I've got no concerns with him rolling and just getting into a spot somewhere in the first six. So he, okay. He'll be anywhere handy. Ben doesn't have to lead on him. He can make that decision as he, as he takes his time down the back straight. So yet again, I think he's over the odds. A lot of horses are over the odds in this race. Yep. There's, I think there's one horse in single figures. It's about four bucks fifty-five dollars. The rest are all double figures. And for me, I mean, the favourite. Look, you might win at five dollars, but I'd be shopping well around him and, and looking at these things with double figures. I think you, the punters get a real chance here to, to give the bookies a touch-up. You could back a couple here and, yep. and, and and play quite well. So I think he's one of them. I think 1,300 is fine. Seven furlong at Eagle Farm is just too far for him. Yep. But you look at him at the 100 the other day, off a, off a really good enough speed, yep. he was still there. So yep. And down in the worst part of the track. The horses were coming much wider that day. So I think um, I think you'll see him race well. 1,300 will suit. I wouldn't be worried too much about that wide draw. Okay, Warby is the next one. 58 and a half kilos. Robbie Dolan rides barrier 13. He's paying $14 to win and $4.20 for the place for play up. Um, has really progressed this preparation with two strong finishing wins and then a third in the gateway last start. Uh, should find a nice spot from his draw. Yeah, ticked over in between as well. He's in great order. He'll, he'll sit back off. These sort of big field suitor horse like him. Mm -hmm. They'll generate speed. He'll be somewhere, you know, second half of the field with cover. 
look to, to ride through them. That's how you, well, we don't, we don't know. It's a new Gold Coast track. Yeah. We've got to see how it plays. But mm -hmm. you used to be able to win from back there at the coast, just track up and find yeah. the right part. And that's what he'll be doing. He'll be in that second half. He'll track up and he'll have a good finish late. He's, he's a much improved horse. He's prep. He's got good confidence under his belt. And mm -hmm. he, he's a real chance of race. You've just got to set up for him. He's got to get the right luck in running. Next one is Boom Shot. He'll carry 57 kilos. Angela Jones will ride him at barrier 23. Uh, with play up, Boom Shot's paying $17 to win and $5 for the place. Uh, big run for third along the rail first up at Eagle Farm. Has drawn the outside gate, but you'd expect him to come with a big finish. Yeah, he'd probably come up the worst part of the track and still run on well the other day. You know, I think it's a pretty good form rate with Bazeek and Daytona there, so pretty good race. He'll improve out the 1300. He's in good order. He looks well. He's going to be right back. Yep. Whether he can come from right back or not, I'm not sure. But he's in good order, but the barrier is significant for him because he'd probably nearly be last on settling. Okay. Daytona's the next run. Next runner, 57 kilos. Damien Thornton rides barrier 8. He's paying $13 to win with play up and $4 for the place. Finished strongly last start for second at Eagle Farm over the 1,200 uh, metres behind a decent one. Uh, was seventh in this race last year as a three-year-old for his previous yard. Yeah, he'll run pretty good this horse. I think 1,300 is ideal for him now. He's just finally starting to relax for me. We made a few errors early in the prep on him and he's just coming around now where I want him. I think he's come out of that last run. The best he's come out of any race since I've trained him. So I'm very happy with him. I'm glad I run him in between. Mm -hmm. um, he'll get a midfield spot here with cover, but maybe even third pair, just relax nicely. He'll really attack the line. He, he's a big improver here and a real life chance. John Rambo is the fifth one, 57 kilos. Ryan Maloney on board, barrier 14. He's paying $14 to win and $4.20 for the place with play up. Uh, you said it was a forget run in the gateway uh, when something did annoy him in the barriers um, and was a good winner before that and looked very good in a trial last John week. John Rambo, well, if I knew what he was thinking, it, it would help me a lot. <laughs> no um, one knows what he's Everything thinking. was perfect going into the gateway. Um, I was always a little nervous at the 1400 with him second up, but everything was spot on work. He'd done great, prayed a Quite okay, got to the barriers, everything was normal, got in the gates and all of a sudden he had a hissy fit, which is totally out of character. He's been back to the trial since, he was perfect, no, no issue, back to normal. So if the normal John Rambo turns up, he's, he's easily got the ability, he rated through the roof when he won that midweek and mm -hmm. you know, he's got, the, he's got the ability, we don't put a horse like him in these races hoping, we know that no, he has that, right. that level of ability to be competitive. but. Everything's just got to get the brain's just got to be happy enough to be there. So, yeah. if um, if John, you know, doesn't go psycho like Rambo on TV and just looks after himself, he could, he he's definitely got the ability to win. Maloney knows him well. I think mean, he's a thorn in Ryan's side. And, yes. But um, he knows he's got the ability. That's why he, that's why he chose to ride the horse. So yeah. he's he's a nice horse. Um, things have just got to pan out for him. But a lot of ours are going to be in that midfield to back in this, but standing order. Mm -hmm. So tempo in this race is going to be crucial. And we're going to have a fair idea this track's playing by the time we get yeah. to the last. So what? how are you going to split the five? Then? Oh, I'm not going to split them. I think they're all very similar. A lot of those that raced in the, the gateway, apart from Rambo that had a hissy fit, they all finished pretty close yeah. together with each other. Um, and it all just depends on the tempo of that race. But I think all of these, to that 1300 in this grade, like I said, the favourite's five bucks. I, ours are all that double figure and they're all in that that sort of similar yeah. price bracket. They're all very, very similar. If I, if I was just having a, throwing a stab at the dark, I'd, I, I think Warby's going super. Okay. You know, he can really run a race. He's always had the ability to be running in a race like this. Okay. Okay, we are into the final furlong of this week's final gallop. Who do you think your best winning chance at the Gold Coast is on Saturday? I think, I think it's a tricky day, it really is, particularly when we go to a track we've only seen race once yep. and, and totally different this week with all the rain we've had early, which, which should make the surface really good, much, mm -hmm. much, much better. Um, I'm going to go with Moulin Miss. Okay. Um, I've got good respect for the favourite, obviously, and, and Tony knows what he's doing, bringing up here using a similar format to Sunlight, running the week before into the millions, so that horse will be will be really ready because you can't win the means next week if you're not pretty ready no. this week so right. um and my filly's first up but i really like her i think she's well above average and if i if i do my dough on her this weekend i will recoup it at some stage in the next month or, or this preparation okay your best each way chance well i'm going to be a bit of a bit of a weakling here and tip a five dollar each way chance because five bucks to win two yeah. bucks to place that's good enough Tis. i'm going to tip um I'll, I'll, I'll give you two actually each yeah. way i'm going to tip Madame Odette, I think she's just okay. a, a lock top three. I, I love yep. where she's drawn. She's spot on for this race. I'll put her in. And the other one I'll, I'll put in is probably Warby each way. Okay. 
um, in the last. I just can't see him running badly. And Robbie Dolan's had that ride on him. He knows him. He did a good job on him that day. He was flattered a bit getting to the right part of the track. Yeah. But I think if we can get the right sort of run on him, him or, da him or Daytona, I, I like both those each way in that race. But like I said, ours are all pretty similar. But they're, they're good, good each way odds. Okay, your best at the Provincials, uh, Sunshine Coast on Friday and Sunday. Uh, Friday I'll leave alone. I don't know what sort of track we're going to get there. They, they've had a inundated with rain as well. It was yeah. quite wet yesterday, but he, suspicious times up there at a mile. He, he'll be competitive. But last time he ran there on a soft track, he ran super. Mm -hmm. um, I quite like uh, the filly on on Sunday. The draws aren't aren't out yet. Pink Thunder. Pink Thunder. Yeah, she is in the Magic Means Maiden. We haven't spoken of her because she's you know well down in the in the, yeah. in the emergency list, so we're probably not going to get a run. But I thought she was good. I ran her unsuitable distance first up twelve hundred. I just didn't want to take her up away from home straight away. Yep. Um, she's ready to head up there now, and I think she'd run really well. Okay, your best track worker this week? This week, track worker. Hmm, interesting. Madame Odette was pretty good. Yeah. She ticked over really nicely. Um, she was great. Both those horses going to the wave work well. They worked on different days. Amy Grand worked Wednesday, she worked Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, we only worked on the dirt. Um, you know, Tuesday morning was yeah. pretty wet here and whatnot, but we got sufficient work into all these horses. So. She was good. The two two-year-olds worked together, Moulin Miss and Ballastare. Okay. They were very good yeah. Tuesday morning. They're, they're both well above average racehorses, these. So, yeah, actually, I'll, just the two-year-olds. Ballastare, two Moulin okay. Miss, I thought that, that paired up piece of work was, was very sharp, good two-year-old work. Okay. Uh, your performance from the stable for the week? <clears throat> oh, geez, I don't know where we look there. Um, it's hard not to want to say Zeus Tile yeah. running third because it's his last run for the stable. I just love him. He's, and he's, he still um, did his very And proud. he still tried as hard yeah. as possibly and he pulled up like he never raced but yeah. Princess Rani's for me um, planned this race out right at the start of the prep took all the gear off of the blinkers everything just to have it ready for the shootout and I wanted to win that race with the Huddies obviously yeah. they own shootout it wasn't the biggest race in the world it wasn't the biggest race this summer but it was just a race we pencil I penciled in three or four months ago to try and aim for and mm -hmm. we got, got the job done so I think it was really good when that plan came together and seeing our happy Graham and Linda were to yeah. win it sort of made it, absolutely. made it made it well worthwhile. So Princess Rani's winning the shootout for me. Okay, absolutely. Well deserved. Okay, now it is time for Cavs Corner, which is supported by the Brisbane Airport Hotels Group. He only got a second leg uh, up of his two-leg multi last week, the Situation Room, so no cigar. Uh, let's see what he's got for us this week. Uh, welcome to Cavs Corner for this week. We were a touch unlucky last week, first leg went down. Nothing surer than a cab Molly is the second leg. It got up at 7.50. Anyway, this week, we'll go to the Gold Coast on Saturday. We'll go uh, <coughs> Ballastia, a win in the first. And then in the last race, we'll go Warby, a place. It's around $16 for the $1 unit. Good punning, guys. So he's gone. Ballastia, the two-year-old, to win. Hopefully you run him. Uh, into Warby a place. Nice multi. Yeah. It's good. I think Ballastia looks a tough race. I yeah. have a good respect for the favourite in that race. Kieran yeah. Mars horse. It's a, it's a nice horse too, Spy Wire. And it's yeah. got the racing edge on us, but not a bad multi, Cav. I'd probably... Yeah, not a bad multi. Yeah, not a bad. No, put it this way. If, if, um, if Ballastia happens to get beat, uh, geez, will be all short. Oh, geez, that, that's what the boys were saying all last week. Nothing more sure than the second leg of a failed cab multi and yep. situation room duly saluted. He did, he did. Anyway, good luck for a big week ahead at the Gold Coast Tony, both on the racetrack and uh, securing our next stars in the sales ring. Yeah, thanks, Claire. Thanks, everyone. If you are interested in getting into yearlings with us or you know looking at what we want to, what we purchase to send out, please get in touch uh, with our sales team because mm -hmm. we will be buying horses at that sale and. There will be there will always be opportunities available to jump on board. 100%. There will. Best of luck to everyone on the weekend.